common behaviour in many animals to hide pain or injuries. It's a fairly logical reaction and attitude that's needed as a survival technique. And most herbivores appear to be weak or injured, especially if within a herd will even be specifically targeted by a predator that will require less energy and effort to hunt and kill. This type of behaviour is also common in pack carnivores and omnivores as well. Weak or sickly individuals will be challenged for dominance of a pack, or lower ranking animals may even be forced out of a pack completely. If the symptoms of an injury or illness are too difficult to mask, the animal will often seek out a quiet place where it can be left alone to rest and recuperate, and only rejoin a group once it's actually recovered from the injury. This again is a sensible precaution. The normal advantage of being in a group sometimes don't apply to injured animals. They're less likely to be found if they're on their own than in a big group. This type of activity is also seen in domesticated animals, from pets to farm animals. People looking after the animals may only notice how severely sick an animal is just shortly before its death, but the animals, like their wild cousins, may also try to spend some of their time hiding may un be unusually quiet in their general attitude. Now, this form of activity among social animals can take place in an animal that we actually come into contact with every day. And yet, for the most part, we overlook the possibility of the existence of this type of behaviour. It's because the animal in question is a human being. We often think of ourselves as being vastly different from other animals, and yet some of our behaviour very closely resembles that of other animals, both directly and indirectly. Some of the direct examples are the attitudes of walking off an injury or pushing through the pain, which are typified in various sports where, despite what might be considered a, quite a serious injury, people are able to continue to the end of a match before requiring medical treatment. Then again, there's reluctance by some people to see a doctor or medical profession for treatment of some condition. The attitude of or I'll give it a few days and hope it clears up, or I don't want to bother with someone with something that might be so minor or whatever, might be fairly standard examples of this kind of behaviour. Alternatively, the other attitude can relate to some diseases like flu, where all we want to do is wrap ourselves up in a bed, be left alone, and can get even quite aggressive if someone tries to hover over us and not leave us to ourselves. Now these direct examples have obvious parallels with the rest of the animal kingdom. However, not all illnesses and injuries are quite so obvious, but our attitude to them might still have some basis in our evolutionary history. Here I'm thinking about mental illnesses like depression, where a reluctance to tell anyone about how they're feeling again would reveal what in evolutionary terms could be thought of as a weakened and vulnerable state. People fear to talk about it with friends, relatives or medical professionals because they might be thought of as weak, and yet as much as a sixth of the population may suffer from depression at some stage in their lives. We probably need to overcome our evolutionary history and change our attitudes to seeking help if we're ever to fight against depression and mental illness in a serious way.